Okay, so, uh, it seems like some people put things in for y. I think that's about at least two people. And that's fine because uh, we learned something about plugging things in for y. I hope so. If you want to remain anonymous, I'll just state what you maybe figured out. It's a little tricky about plugging things in for y. Here, not so bad, but it's work, right? I gotta solve for x. Yeah, that's so great. Here, you put something in for y, and we have a real conundrum. You put, say, 2 in for y, and you're supposed to figure out what x is. That's not too hard over here. If I put 7 over here, it wouldn't be very difficult to even just look at the equation and just figure it out. Right? Over here, though, even if you're going to guess what x is, x may in reality not be any easy number. It might be like the this square root of 14 minus 3 over 10. Like it could be some really weird answer, right? So, well, what did we learn about that? Don't plug things in for y. Okay. Uh, I mean, there will come a time when we have a, does anybody remember what this kind of equation is called? Quadratic. quadratic, it's a quadratic equation. And certainly we solve quadratic equations and we should be able, to, later on, not right now, because maybe we've forgotten, put a two there and figure out what this x is. And since this is kind of mind blowing, what this x is, and it has to be the exact same x as this, I mean, I could figure out two numbers to plug in here and there and get two, but the exact same number has to go here and there and get two. It's kind of a crazy proposition. Um, but by following other the basic things that we learn, um, just what we know about addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division. Uh, I don't know if I said all four of them or if I repeated one, but we can, it all follows from there how to solve for x here. But that's down the road. A ways down the road. Okay, so what I did ask you to do was what? Plug in three numbers, and then figure out what three numbers come out and how they correspond, right? Um, and put them in for x, of course. So anybody put something in for x they'd like to share? They're particularly proud. Braxton? Those are the functions you gave us. <laughs> yeah, I gave you different ones. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for telling me that. You're right. <laughs> Let's fix that. I mean, they're not that much different, right? It's not like you couldn't handle it. What did I give you? y equals? 3 plus x. Ooh, even better. x plus 2. 2 and the other? y equals x squared. Plus three x. Yes. It's minus five. Minus five. Okay, now we're good. And you guys got you got a fraction of the course because you were a little bit further along, and I wanted to challenge you to that. Right. So, who plugged something in for x and got something out for x? Plugged in two and got three point five. Okay, two. So two. Two. Uh, remember, if we put over one as a fraction, and now we're dealing with fractions, it's a little easier. 2, got the cross canceling, well familiar with the cross canceling. We're going to talk about simplifying fractions uh, first thing today. Um, that's a really important thing. So we got 3 times 1 is 3, or 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2. So you got 3 halves plus 2 is 3 halves, minus 4 halves, and 7 halves. We could be done, or we could say that that would be uh, 4 and a half. Is that what you got? 4 and a half? 3 and a half. Three and a half. Of course you got three and a half. That would be correct. Four and a half would be correct. Okay, so three and a half. And how did you like keep a record of this input and output? I just wrote input and output. So you wrote the word input? Yes. Input, and like a colon there or something? No, I just put them under it. Under it. Input, you put uh, two. two. Okay, and then would you put, put output next to it, below yeah, it? Output next, next to it. Okay, output. And you put? Okay, or seven halves, or whatever. Uh, great, does that tell me what I just did? Right? Basically saves me from doing all the work again if I wonder, what did I get when I put two in? I did that already, I did that work, and so I can refer back to what I got. Did you then just keep writing underneath those? Yeah. Perfect, right? There's a way to do that. Uh, I will be checking my phone until my wife gives birth, and then I won't be checking my phone. Okay, so I want to miss that. Um, 
So, what am I saying? This is not a quite a standard way of keeping track of inputs and outputs, but it's 100% effective and 100% acceptable and it just works. Okay? And there's so many other ways, there's as many ways as you can think of to keep track of these inputs and outputs. Okay? Did anybody put an input that they didn't get a fraction as an output? Pretty. Pretty? Well, it seems that if you put four in the back. Okay. So let's just switch colors and y equals three fourths times four plus two equals three fourths times four over one. Two cancel. Oh, we fully cancel out the denominator of four, right? Not just partially, like this one, but fully. Okay. Because this is what kind of number is this? Or what relationship does this four have with this four, or any other number that will cancel out this four? This number is what? A reciprocal. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. What's another number I could plug in here that would cancel this four? Oh, even. Any even number. Two is even. Okay. That didn't work out. <laughs> Eight. Eight is another number. Is it another, another number? Sixteen. Sixteen. So what are these numbers repeating? Four, right? Or numbers that, just another way of saying the same thing, that have a factor of four. Okay, so now we don't have a fraction, which is great. Uh, so no, we don't have a fraction, we just have three plus two is five. And so let's just use this guy, or, or Brennan, how did you keep track of your inputs and outputs? Um, I did a graph. You just drew a graph. Yeah. So you did this, and then so uh, if you well, I kind of made it like not really an x and y. I just sort of did like a graph where you have dependent. Oh, like the uh, you like went to science. Yeah. Or yeah. Like yeah. So you just kind of go like this. Yeah. That's just really the first quadrant of a graph, right? Of the yeah. of the Cartesian coordinate plane. Uh, so you went four and up five. And you put a dot. Yeah. Okay. There you go. There's another way. Just as effective as this. All right. And that's where this is leading. It's leading to graphs. And Brennan has touched on exactly what a graph is. I put in four and I got out five, and it's not anything trickier than that. Okay. The thing that we get tricked about is, oh, what's the slope or what's the y? If you forget that, just do, forget it. Forget about it. Forget about slopes, forget about y-intercepts. Plug something in, get something out, until the shape starts to emerge, and then connect those points into the shape it looks like. That's a graph, okay? But we'll leave that behind for a second. Let's come over to this one. Um, let's offer an input they gave and the output they So I put three in and got 13 out. Three got 13 out, I'm just gonna go three and nine, plus nine, plus five, plus 18, plus five, I get 13. And how did you keep track of this input and output? Same way. Which, which same way, there's two ways. The, the one I already gave. Oh, because you already gave me the first one, of yeah. course, that's okay, so I'm just gonna put, no, I'm not, that's a different graph, that's a different function, so you did input, uh, was three, and output was 13. Good? All right, you get any idea? Okay. Think about how that leads, think about already, Brennan has, has uh, opened wide the doors for us uh, to think about what do these functions have to do with graphs. They, in fact, are the exact same thing. Graph and the equation function are the same thing. They are something that takes an input and gives an output. You match the numbers, or you look at the graph, and you say, I'm just gonna put in three and get out, whatever. Okay. That's all these are, they're just functions, okay? But like I said, as I thought more and more, there's, there's so many things between um, adding, multiplying, dividing, fractions, and getting to a graph that, that do become problematic, so we're gonna go ahead and go over those things, all right? So to start with, we're gonna talk about how or when are you able to simplify a rational
rational expression. Okay? What I like to do, and what you should get in the habit of doing, if you see a word that you don't know, first try and figure out what it might mean it's based on the word and, and the words within those words. You know, we come talk about root words um, and, and what those mean and what they might tell you about what this word is. Okay, so rational expressions kind of be, have to be in a math mentality. What is a rational number? Um, it's either one that doesn't have decimals or one that's above zero. Give me a fraction. Okay, I'm gonna switch over here. Charlie, is that Charlie? I'm gonna go with Charlie. You can write it as a fraction. Now the numbers you're describing, you've written as fractions, so they are rational numbers, right? Any number you can write as one integer over another integer, that's a rational number. That's what we like to call fractions, right? Fractions are the, the name that we know these by. Uh, and again, the beginning of the year, trying to take away some of the confusion we have about fractions. They're not that big a deal. They are, they are simple to handle. So, okay, rational number is a, is, a, uh, is a fraction. And if you look at the root word here, ratio, right? Ratios are often expressed as fractions. If we call them rational numbers, they're, they're ratio-null. All right, so they're not numbers, not rational numbers, they're expressions. Somebody tell me what an expression is? In math, what's an expression? An equation. Uh, expressions are in equations. Equations become equations when you put equal signs in them, right? We can have an expression on one side and an expression on the other side and put them equal to it, now we have an, exp we have, now we have an equation. And whatever you see there on one side or the other of an, of an equal sign is an expression. Okay, 5 plus 2, expression. x squared plus 2x, expression. Brennan? A combination of two um, numbers? Or yeah, even a number by itself. 5, technically, is expression. It's a little much, right? Yeah. Just call it 5. <laughs> Not worry about calling it expression. But yeah, usually what we think is we're combining some numbers together with some addition, some kind of operations, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. That's called an expression. Okay? And in algebra, we worry about algebraic expressions. What makes algebra algebra? What's it makes it different from other kinds of math? It's like the algebra you just call it. When you get into algebra, what do you do differently than you used to do? Dividing. No, you divided in third grade, <laughs> fourth grade, right? Right? You did divide. <laughs> so it's not division that makes algebra algebra. Any guesses? It's different from an algebra book or from a letters. Letters. That's it? Letters. Variables. Uh, I don't know. Now these letters we call different names. I like to call it an unknown quantity, but that's a lot of word that most people just want to call variables, so we'll call them variables. The, the problem with variables, let me just briefly explain. The problem with a variable is um, and here's, a, here's an example. Uh, 2x plus 3 equals 5. Okay. Before I put equals 5, what is this x worth? Any, anything you want. Absolutely anything. Put in anything you want. Now I put it equal to 5. Now what is this x equal to? Anything you want? Something very specific. Here, it varies. It changes. It could be anything you want it to be. It's a variable. And here it is, it doesn't vary at all. It's just a confusing word. Okay? But it doesn't get used a lot. Teachers use it, students use it, it happens all over the place. But I like to split hairs. It's a, a pastime of mine. I call this a variable. It's confusing. So that's why I like to call it an unknown quantity. Okay? Here it's unknown until I tell it what to be. Here it's unknown until I figure out what it actually is. Right? Here I solve an equation, I figure it out, that's what it is, that's what it has to be. Uh, and otherwise, just depends on what I want it to be. So it's just unknown until it's known. So algebra, numbers, numbers representing, or sorry, letters representing numbers, that's algebra, that's it. Uh, I won't go into all that. Okay, so an algebraic expression would be that has variables in it or unknown quantities. <coughs> okay. So let's start with a rational expression. Okay, this might be the, the time to take notes if you haven't taken notes so far. Let's talk about 2x over 9. Rational expression. Fraction, variable, in it, with an unknown quantity in it. I said 4x 
before we even do that, let's, let's just talk about like uh, 5, 15, 15 over uh, 35. Ken's fraction, the, I'm going to use the word simplify, not reduced. Simplify. Can you do simplify? Yes. Why? What, what can you do to simplify? Divide them both by 5. Okay? And so traditionally, we do this, and then we, uh, we would just divide by 5 is 3, and we divide by 5 is 7. Great. It got simplified. Okay? Because those two fractions are equal to each other. All right. But let's say. Very simple, x plus 1 over x, right? We're going to work our way to uh, a little bit more complicated looking rational expression. Just answer yes or no. Do you think that this could be simplified similar to the way this is simplified? Just raise your hand yes. Raise your hand no. Didn't raise your hand, but you just did it. Uh, I'm going to get sidetracked here for a second. This is an experiment where people sit in a room and everyone's an actor except for one person is actually being experimented on, so they don't get that. So I think everybody else is doing the same thing as them. So they go around the table, and they show them cards like this, this, and this. Two lines, right? And they go around the, the whole table, and the person who's not an actor, who's actually just like doesn't know what's going on, is the last person, and they say, which line is longer, okay? So if I ask you which line is longer, which one is it? The top one, okay? But you know what the actors say? The bottom one. <laughs> it's very obvious that this is, no, that's not the case. So they say the bottom one, and they go to the, the so the guy in the end is like, what are you talking about? It's so obvious that the top one. But they go through six or seven people, and every single person says the bottom one is longer. And you know what the last guy says? The bottom one, he says. I'm so confused how could all of these people say the wrong thing. Even if he doesn't believe himself, the fact that he would say that this is longer it's just a violation of fact. But he just gives into it because, well, everybody else said, I don't know what it looks like. It, some of you are different or weird. So I don't know. I thought it was an interesting one. So if you, if you think you've got the answer, you just say the answer. You might be wrong, but you might be right. So we're going to get to that. Can I simplify this? Can I write this some other way? Can I write it as you're probably thinking, like, uh, actually, let's, let's change this to a 2. You're probably thinking, like, I can write that as, like, 2 or 1. Well, let's, let's find out. Let's get there. If you think you can simplify this, you need my help. So you need to pay attention. You need to pay close attention to what we're about to say. Let's go back to the simple 15 over 35 and talk about what's really happening. Because if you think that can be simplified, you do not understand what's happening. What is really going on? All right. So I got all our names. I don't want your name. Alexis, you said that you divided them both by five, right? And you're right. That's what you can do. Uh, that's what you would have to be able to do over there, too. Which might not be right. Okay, so let's stay over here. What's really happening, and this is a fail-safe way to simplify a fraction that if you listen to me, you do it the same way I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a step-to-step -step procedure. I'm talking about checking against the facts that you already know about numbers. If you do that, you'll never fail, okay? So you look at those and you say, I think five. Five is the number they have in common, okay? We have to do better than that. It's not just a number. What kind of number is it? Five is what? We're in the right ballpark, but it's the wrong word. Factor. Five is a factor of 15 and of 35. That's exactly right. That's 100% correct. And if, if you could always flawlessly remember that that's what you're looking for, you still would never fail, but it will still fail, right? So it's not flawless. So what we really want to do is view what's going on. What's really happening is the 5 divides the 5 and you're left with a 1. If you can cancel the 5, this is what has to be possible. I have to be able to write this as the product of two fractions. Okay? I'm not saying that this is the way you have to, to simplify fractions every time. I'm saying it has to be possible to do this. If you can't do this, it can't be simplified. So 5 over 5, the thing that we think will cancel, okay? we have to be able to write it as this times some other fraction that gives us the original fraction. Can you do that? Can you do 5 times something to give us 15? Yes. 5 times 3. Can we do 5 times something gives us 35? Stop right, stop. 7. Okay. There's no tricks. There's no memorization here. It's just math. Just arithmetic. What's 5 divided by 5? 
It's one. Okay, so that's one. And what's one times any number? Same, same number, right? One times two, seven, two, seven. One times five, five. One times seven, seven. So now we have one times two sevenths. We're left with three sevenths. Okay, there's no tricks, there's no confusion. It is exactly what you need to be able to do in order to cancel things out. Okay, let's look at this next example. Now we have this x in here. Now we're starting to get into algebra. Okay. What do you feel like could cancel in this expression? A three. Okay. If we're starting to wonder if a three can cancel, all we have to do is say, okay, three is the thing I want to cancel. I think that if there's a three in there, that could be divided by another three. The question is, can you write it as three times some other fraction? So when I multiply them both together, you get three x plus nine. Can I multiply three times x to get three x? Did I say x? Can I multiply three times something to get three x? Yeah, what one. Is it? One. One, x. one x. One x. Don't forget about the one x. Okay, can I multiply three times something to get nine? Three. Three, it worked. Right? This product of two fractions is equal to this fraction, so we're not changing anything, we just change the way it looks, not the what it's worth. And three divided by three is one, and so one times x over three is x over three. Okay? That's exactly what's happening. When you just put lines through here and then write the new fraction, that is what you are doing, what you should be doing. Um, let's go on to um, x x squared over uh, 3x Do you feel like something should cancel? Yeah? What do you feel like should cancel? X to the second. Okay, the x to the second should cancel, so we should be able to write it as x to the second divided by x to the second. That's exactly what's happening when we simplify a fraction. We cancel things out, we divide them both by the same thing. Now we can look at it. We have to be write, able to write it as x squared times something gives us this numerator. Is it possible? Can you multiply x squared times something here to get 2x squared? Mm -hmm. By 2, I know it seems simple. That's where we start. We start with simple. x squared times something equals 3x cubed. Is that possible? Yeah. What? 3x. You can multiply by 3x. It works. We can multiply x squared by 2 to get 2x squared. That does work. x squared times 3x is 3x to the third. So our instinct of x squared canceling, yes, x squared divides x squared. That's just math. That's not a trick. x squared divided by x squared is 1. So 1 times 2 over 3x is 2 over 3x. And there's our simplified fraction. That's what's going on. So let's come over here. Do you think that the x can cancel the x? feels like a trick question. Okay. If we were to divide this, this, this x by this x, um, actually, let, let's make it, let's, let's write a slightly different one, and we'll put an x squared down. Okay. What do you think? Can you cancel out that x squared? Let's go like this. 2x plus 3. Um, here, let's put a plus. Um, plus five, so that we'll wind up with something down here. That's all I'm trying to do. So you cancel the x squareds, and, and that's what you're left with. It feels, I don't know, it seems good, because I'm used to crossing things out that are the same thing, and now they're canceled out. Okay. What do we say all the way back here? 15 and 35 have a common what? Factor. factor of five. That word factor is key, and you're ignoring factor when you do this. Okay. Something up here call the, the weeping kitten theorem. If you try to do that kind of thing, cancel this x squared with this x squared, and just be left with two x plus one over three, somewhere in the world, a kitten just, just breaks down in tears. It's sad to that fun that that. Okay? There's a stronger theorem, something worse happens to the kitten, but I don't I don't adhere to that theorem. That's for for other teachers who are a little harsher than I am. It just makes a kitten sad. So if you Try to do that. Hopefully the kitten cries and, and then you, you just think twice about it. Let's go back. Let's go back. Ask the question again, can I cancel the x squared with the x squared? If I could, it would have to be a common factor, right? We all agreed on that? Because we're, we're about to dive into a mathematical definition. So let's get into a mathematical definition. 
What do you think we're about to define? What do they have to have in common? Factor. We're going to define the word factor. Right? It's going to be very mathematical, very exact, very airtight. That's what I love about math. We're going to write down the definition of a very innocuous word, factor. But it's one of the things that I love about math. Definitions of words, there's, there's no ambiguity. If I say factor, it means something very, very specific. There's no what ifs, there's no arguments. And if, even if there were arguments, then we would just fix that definition. Okay? But factor is a really old word, and it doesn't need any fixing in this definition. Okay? Let me start you off. Get that colon looking a little. All right, so I'm wondering do these both have a common factor of x squared? That's my question, really. If I want x squared to cancel, they need to be a common factor of x squared. Okay? So, and we're going to be very algebraic about it. We're going to use letters. If A, okay, I'm going to try and bold A, is a factor of B. We're just talking about two things, two numbers, two expressions, whatever they are. And in this case, we're hoping x squared is a factor of, of this guy, also a factor of this guy. So, you know, is x squared a factor of, say, this? That's what we're trying to figure out. If a is a factor of b, then. Okay, you tell me. Okay? If a is a factor of b, then what must be true? If a is a factor of b, b is a factor of a, if 3 is a factor of 5, or 3 is a factor of 15, 15 a factor of 3? B is a multiple of A. Okay. Uh, that, we're not quite to the airtight part because that's a little bit circular, right? We say something a factor of something else and we just give the other thing a name and say it's multiple of that thing. It just kind of goes back and forth. And what's a multiple? Well, a multiple has this a factor. What's a factor that just go back and forth, right? Then A can be put into B without any remainder. That's great, right? We got a little bit, a little bit tighter. Because when you say put into it, that's not quite a math term, right? And it's not anything, uh, you know, it's not your fault or anything. You're taught that, right? Go into is a mathematical term that we learn all in third, fourth, fifth grade. Then B divided by A has no remainders. B divided by A has no remainders. That's very good. That's very good. Um, I think there's a little bit cleaner way to write it, but that's getting at it, right? That's, that's really getting at it. Where B divides a without any remainders, now without a remainders, I think we can all be like, yeah, I get what that means. Okay? But let's clean it up even more. Here's how I'm going to do it. Okay? I'm going to use multiplication because everybody likes multiplication more than division. I think they do. <laughs> yes? Wait, right, let me think this through. I think I got it. No. <laughs> I, I thought I was on the phone. Okay. <laughs> let's just go like this. A. And I'm just going to bring something in from that out of nowhere. K. A times K. K, L, Z. It doesn't matter what letter I use. I'm just using K. K is a common letter to use in this kind of answer. And I just need some other number. Well, what would A times K be equal to if A is a factor of B? B. B. Okay, well, we're almost done. A times K equals B. That sounds like a factor, right? How do I know 3 is a factor of 15? Because, because 3 times 5 is 15. That's exactly how we say it. Okay? Uh, it's much easier to say 3 times 5 is 15 than 15 times 5. 3 is 5 times 5. It's a little bit better. Okay? So, what's, what's left to, you know, what, what's keeping us from having this airtight definition? What's kind of left up in the air, kind of like, well, what's that? It's not well defined here in this definition. Um, does k have to be like an actual number without decimals? Isn't it what k has to be? Yeah. If k is not that, if it is not a <coughs> non-decimal number, even if it's a fraction, we have an issue because that's not that's not factor, right? Three times four fifths power is equal to some other. No, that's not working out very well, right? Or say five times three fifths is three. Does that mean five is a factor of three? No. You don't multiply by fractions to get numbers and say they're, they're factors. So 
we have to say where k is a certain kind of number. What kind of number does k have to be? Okay, whole number's good. Rational would be fractions, so you would include fractions. So you want to narrow it down. So whole number, sure, that's a good one. But also whole Real. numbers. Real would be like all the numbers you ever heard of. Oh god. Yeah, yeah, an integer. yeah, an integer would be uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and infinitely in that direction, negative one, negative two, negative three, infinitely in that direction. So I got like two as a factor of negative six. Right? That's what I'll ask for. So k is an integer. Not very many words, but it perfectly defines factor in an airtight way. There's no arguing or there's like, well, what if no, okay, that makes, but what if, no, that makes sense, right? Yes, everything I know about factors is well-defined by this definition, right? That's what I love about math. Just a few words, you think about it a little bit, you make it nice and clean and tidy, and it, you can't argue with it. For all of time, for any number of races we might discover out in space, of aliens, this will still be true. No matter where we go, no matter how many years pass by, this will always be true, okay? Which is, I love that. You may not love that, but I love that so much. Almost as much as I love my kids. It's not that, it's not close. I love my kids a lot more than that. Um, so the question here is, can we cancel that x squared from the numerator and denominator? Well, if we could, it would have to be a common factor, and if it's a common factor, then we have to be able to write it as that common factor, and the common factor we want is x squared. We have to write it as x squared times something to get the other thing. That might be very confusing when we clarify it in this context. Just like this, just like this, just like this, I need to be able to write, if I think x squared can be canceled, I need to be able to do x squared over x squared, okay, and multiply that by some other fraction, so that I wind up with this fraction. Then x squared will divide x squared, and this will be my simpler fraction, just like all these other guys, all these other examples. Now let's dis discuss how oh, I put a plus five here before. Let's discuss is that possible. I don't know. Let's take a look. Could I, hey, what about x plus five, right? x times x is x squared. Any problem with that? What's the problem here? Oh, then it'd be x cubed. Uh, oh, then, uh, yeah, let me clear that up a little bit. Let me just put one. X, time, x squared times one is x squared, right? X squared plus five, is that gonna work? Why not? Yes, right? What am I forgetting about when I just do x squared times one and just keep this five? It starts with a D. Yeah. Do you ever say paper cross anyway? Down here at the bottom of this black bar under the calculators. You said that I would have to have also a 5x squared x squared plus 5x squared. What is that? What property is that? The distributive, distributive property. Right? You're remembering the distributive property correctly? I am not. Okay. But it's a very common mistake, especially when we're doing fractions. We forget, oh, when I multiply this denominator by this denominator, I have to distribute the whole thing. And on top of that, I can just write this 5 plus 1 is 6, and that's just 6x squared. That's not the same as x squared plus 5. Okay. I'm running into issues. Maybe I'm just not thinking about this right. Can anybody think of something I can multiply x squared by and get x squared plus 5? I'm open to any ideas that you have. While you think about that, we have the same problem in the numerator. What can I multiply x squared by that would give me x squared plus 2x plus 3? Right. Well, I was thinking maybe at the bottom you could have 1 plus 5 negative x squared. 5 times negative x squared? Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, but 5 is in somewhere like that. Five x. I mean, if it's not if it's not what you were thinking, tell me how to fix it. Well, I was thinking like maybe if you put the five and negative x squared together, so then it would be x squared times five negative x squared would cancel out the negative x squared and be five. 
So you're thinking that if you multiply the x squared times this, you'll, you'll get the negative x squared and the x, cance x squared cancel out? Yeah, but the x squared would still affect the 1. OK, so you have to distribute. So x squared times 1 is x squared. Yeah. And you're thinking x squared times 5 times negative x squared. And then x squared and the negative x squared cancel each other out. Yeah, but I'm trying to figure out how to do that where 5 would be unaffected. Because wouldn't it just be, I don't know, would the negative x squared after 5 cancel out the 5 x squared? Yeah. Uh, 5 minus x and the whole thing squared? 5 minus x squared in parentheses. Would that work? Oh, uh, so let me just erase this. And you're just saying like this? Yeah. Well, now you have a parentheses inside a parentheses, really, if you think about the denominators in parentheses. You've got to distribute the x squared to a 1, the x squared. Distribute the, the x squared to the parentheses. Which means we really have to distribute the x squared to both of those things, too. OK. OK. So let's look. We get x squared. We distribute it to the 5. We get 5x squared. We distribute the x squared to the negative x squared. Now here's a question. What's, negative, what's x squared times negative x squared? They cancel each other out. Let's take a look. x times negative, or x squared times negative x squared. Uh, what's x squared mean? What does it mean to square? x times x. x times x times, hmm, I don't know what's negative x squared. Well, if we don't have the negative inside the parentheses with the x before we square it, then it's negative x times x, right? It's x times x made negative. Does this come out to be something canceled out? No, it comes out to be x times x times negative x times x. So only half of it is canceled? It's x to the fourth, actually, and it's negative. It's not really a cancellation. You're, it's a good idea to think, what can I multiply by that leaves a 5 but cancels the x squared altogether? There is something. If you think of it before I write it down, just make sure you get my attention. Any ideas? Something that will cancel out the x squared but leave a 5. Square roots? Square roots are a good idea. Um, we're not quite, not quite. I mean, it's a good idea, but I'll just, you know, cut to the chase and say, no, that won't work. That won't cancel out. There, there's something, but the problem is it's not going to look very nice. Yeah. Maybe a zero, like x, x uh, or one plus like a zero? Or one plus five. Zero. To the zero? No, minus zero. Oh, minus zero. Minus zero. Oh. We can try to see, but no, one. Like this? Yeah, because then we can still be five minus five. Yeah, five minus zero is just. Or, or sorry, five minus zero is just five. I like the ideas though. We're just like keep them flowing. What are the ideas? We we look at it once we write it down. Usually we'll see like oh okay, I see what how that doesn't work out. Um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and write down what you would have to use in order for this to work. One of course, x squared times one is x squared. You know what you have to multiply to get the x squared to cancel and leave a five is five. We're multiplying by x squared, so we're going to do the reverse of that, the opposite of that, which would be divided by x squared. That'd be over x squared. If I multiply x squared by 5x squared, then the x squareds cancel. And, but you know what? Does that look better? Simpler? Yeah. Did it look simpler than this? No, not simpler than what we started with. The whole idea here was to simplify the fraction in the first place, right? Does not look simpler than that. And let's go look at the numerator. This, of course, would be 1 plus, OK, now I have to multiply by something that leaves a 2 and an x, but then gets rid of an x squared. And that's going to be um, just 2, yeah, 2 over a single x. And that x will cancel one of these x's, leaving us a 2x. All right, what do we have to do to multiply and get a 3? Oh, it's going to be a 3 over x squared. Look at our simplified fraction. Not very simple at all. Okay. Let's back it all the way up. It's not possible to write. Because whatever this is, this would be our simplified fraction. You can see it in every case here. Simpler, simpler, simpler. That fact that it canceled itself, you know, leaves the simpler fraction. There's no way to write something that is simpler so that we can get the x squared to cancel with x squared. Does that make sense? 
if it can factor, it has to be able to write it as one fraction by itself, it is the factor that cancels over itself. Right? If I want x squared to cancel, x squared divided by x squared. If I want x squared to cancel, again, x squared. If I want 3 to cancel, 3 over 3, 5 to cancel, 5 over 5. Okay. If you can't do it that way, if you can't write it as that times something else gives you the original fraction, or the, I guess the numerator, and this divided, or multiplied by the denominator gives us the original denominator, then it won't ever work. It won't ever simplify. These factors won't ever cancel each other out. Let me give you some. Let me give it a try. Start off simple, like. Um, So those three, I want you to uh, just take those three, simplify, simplify it. If you can't, don't. You just state that you can't simplify it. And try the way that I'm showing you. If you think something can be canceled, like say a three, write it this way: the product of two fractions. One of them is three over three. That means it cancels. The other fraction is, well, that would be the simplified fraction. You have to be able to do three times this gives you the whole numerator. Three times this gives you the whole denominator. You can't write it that way. You can't do something like that. Give that a try. I'm coming around. See how you do it. Let's go over this uh, again. These are going really well, so we will not spend too much time on them. What feels like it will cancel between 3x and 27? 3. Three. Three. If it can, it needs to be a common factor, right? You follow this, this train of logic. If 3 can cancel between the numerator and denominator, then 3 has to fact be a factor of the numerator and has to be a factor of the denominator. A simple way to think of that is, if I think 3 can cancel, I have to be able to write this as 3 over 3 times some other fraction. Okay? Let's just fill in the pieces then. So when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. If I can do this, I can write 3 times, what would go here? This x. 3 times x is 3x. That is what 3x means, is 3 times x. Can I do 3 times something that gives me 27? 9. What is 3 divided by 3? It's one. One times x over nine is x over nine. One times anything is itself. Right. What feels like it will cancel in this fraction? Feels like an x squared will cancel. Anything else canceling? A two. Let's try it all. It seems like a two and a couple of factors of x should cancel out. So if that's possible, if that's going to happen, if we're going to be able to cancel those common factors out, then they need to be common. To be able to write this fraction as the product of two fractions. One of those fractions needs to be the factor we think is going to cancel out over itself, 2x squared over 2x squared. All right. Okay, now let's see if it's possible. If it's possible, great. If it's not, then, well, maybe we pick too big a factor or the wrong factor, start over, or you get it out first. So 2x squared times what will give us 8x squared? 4. 4. It works. We can do it. We can find something to multiply by. 2x squared times 7 and an x will give us 14x cubed. It works, we can do it. We can multiply 2x squared times something. So what do we say 2x squared is of the numerator? It's a factor of the numerator, right? Because I'm able to multiply 2x squared times something to get this guy. A is a factor of B because A times K equals B. That's what the definition of factor said, right? A is a factor of B because A times K equals B. And the same thing down here, A is a factor of this B, Can we do that here? Can we do this times this is this? Let's find out. What feels like it might cancel, even if you know that it won't? What seems like it might cancel? Two. A two. A two over two. We have to be able to write this as two over two times another fraction. So that we get this. We'll start with the denominator. Two times something gives us two. Is that possible? Yeah, one. one. Yeah, of course, a one. OK, now in the numerator, can I multiply two by something? Remembering I have to distribute. Have a plus or a minus to get 2x plus 3. Okay? And then the question is if you can, does it look better? Yeah? x plus 1.5. x plus 1.5 does work. I remember that there, but there it is. 1.5 is 
is worse, right? I guess it's just kind of a, a question of which one do you like more. I think it looks simpler to have whole numbers to work with. 2x plus 3 over 2 rather than x plus 1 and a half. Is x plus 1 and a half all the difficult? No, it's not. But in general, if we start having to bring in decimals and fractions inside of our fractions, I don't, I don't like that, right? You know what I'm saying? It's absolutely correct. We could, this is equivalent, x plus 1.5 over 1, which we don't even need to write over 1 anymore, is the same as 2x plus 3 over 2. But do we like it as much? I guess it's, it's, a, it's a matter of opinion at this point. But I can guarantee that if we make a practice of doing this, and then we have to write these all crazy, funky fractions to make it possible to, quote, simplify them, it's not going to look a whole lot better. It's going to be a little bit harder to use. Um, if I had the choice, oh, we had it written down before. If I had the choice between putting an x into this expression or putting it into the one that we had that was like uh, 1 plus 2 over x plus 3 over x squared over 1 plus 5 over x squared, I'd much rather put it here than in that, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, but you know, we, you know, this, this could teach us. If we had something like 2x plus <coughs> something even over 2, well, that might be a different story. Maybe now we, we think maybe 2 can cancel out. Let's try it. 2 over 2 times some other fraction. 2 times 1, right, is, uh, is 2. Can I do 2 times something gives me 2x plus 6? X plus 3. If I distribute that 2 into x plus 3, I got 2x plus 6. You know what? That is nicer. X plus 3 is much nicer than 2x plus 6 over 2. Right? In the end, really what it does uh, is saves us some work. If we're going to plug something in here or plug something in here, I don't multiply everything up by 2 and then divide it by 2. I just x plus 3 and it's done. Okay? So if it's possible to do this, to write the factor that you want to cancel over itself times some other fraction, you're good. If you start to realize, oh, to do this, in this, in this case, I have to do, this would have to be 1 plus 2 over x plus 3 over x squared over 1 plus 5 over x squared, I realize it's not an attractive option, it's not simpler, and no, I don't want to do this. I don't want it to look like that. <coughs> So what do you guys think? Is that have some new insight to that? I'm pretty sure at some point in algebra you would have had some kind of fractions with letters in them, right? Yeah, to simplify them. And it's so common. I mean, it's so common. I found this on the internet. I didn't make this up myself. Uh, that one teacher tells his students, uh, you know, this this theory. He calls it the dead cat theorem. But um, I just call it the, the weeping cat. So common is this mistake that math teachers talk about it with each other. Like, I don't know how to get my students to not do this. They do it all the time. Um, and hopefully, as with adding fractions and multiplying fractions, dividing fractions, you start to think, wait, before I just do this, before I just cross out these x squares, without any thought to why I can, I'm crossing them out, let me think about it. Is this x squared a common factor? Can I write? This fraction that I want to simplify as the factor I want to cancel out over the factor I want to cancel out times some other fraction. And when you realize that you either can't, or if you did, it would be more complicated looking, you realize this is not something I would call simplifiable. I can't simplify this thing. Okay. Let's look at one more together that um, you may wonder if it's uh, factorable. We'll find out together. 3x squared of third plus 2 x over, uh, let's say squared, times uh, over, over, x. Yeah, over x. Is it simplifiable? Is it not? Maybe, let's start with, what do you think feels like it might cancel? X, x feels like x might cancel? It's not simplifiable. Let's find out together. If it's simplifiable, we can look at it in this way that is not a shortcut, it's not a trick, it's not a memory trick, it's math. I am making you break it down into math in the most simple way I can think of so that we can not make mistakes, okay? If we can cancel out an x, if you think you can cancel out an x, here's all you have to prove is possible, and then you can cancel out that x. 
it has to be able, possible, to write it as x over x times some other fraction. Yeah. So let's start with the denominator. The x times something gives us x. What does that say? One. One. OK, up here, we're going to you got to get used to the idea that there's going to be some distribution here. So is there something I can multiply x by to get 3x to the third plus 2x squared? 3x squared. 3x squared. That's it? That does it? Plus 2x. Plus 2x. It worked, right? I was able to write it as x times something gives me this thing, right? So it's not just that, oh, I see addition, and so it, you know, I stop, and it's not, not simplifiable. It turns out that x can be uh, simplified out. Uh, x divided by x is 1, and 3x squared plus 2x is not even a fraction anymore. It's just 3x squared plus 2x. We change it a little bit. 3x um, squared plus 2x over x squared. Do you think we can cancel out an x squared between the numerator and the denominator? What do you think? Mm. No. What do you think about an x, though? I think maybe an x. Let's try it out. x over x times some other fraction, just some other fraction. Let's see. x times what gives us x squared? x times what would give us 3x squared plus 2x. Is that possible? 3x Distribute it, 3x squared, 2x. That also is possible because we can rewrite it this way. The x's cancel each other out, or really x divided by x is 1. 1 times 3x plus 2 is, or 3x plus 2 over x is 3x plus 2 over x. Very very simple, that can actually happen. Okay. So anytime we get into needing to simplify a rational expression like that, we have to be able to do that. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to write it this way every time. This means that it needs to be possible. And as you get more practice, and you start to recognize these patterns, and you get a little faster, and you can cut steps out of this process little by little, you start to not have to write all this stuff down. Okay? But my instinct is you never learned this fact. Or if you did, maybe it was a little fast, or maybe it was a little too much at once. I don't know, but it's just not, not up there. But all these, you know all of these things. It follows from 15 over 27 simplifies to uh, 5 over 9. Okay. We know that. And we take it from there and carry it all the way to here. So all the same stuff applies, right? So would something like 3x squared over 3x squared cancel each other out? Yeah. Over x squared over 3x squared would be? 1. 1. Anything over itself. And uh, just as a quick little verification of that, put anything you want in for x into 3x squared and 3x squared, you get whatever that number is over itself, right? So, anyway, 27 over 27? Definitely, that cancels out. Um, okay. Let's do, um, we kind of talked about the distributive properties, so I'm going to go ahead and leave like a heavy duty visual explanation of the distributive property for when we start to use it. So um, we're going to talk about exponents, common mistakes with exponents, and how not to make them, OK? So give me just a second. Uh, OK. So all I want you to do here is kind of show me that you know what exponents mean by taking these and writing, writing them out the long way, OK? Because exponentiation, exponential notation, is just a shortcut for multiplying something lots of times. And you can imagine. At some point in history, some guy was writing 5 times 5 times 5 over and over and over and over and got tired of that and decided instead of writing 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 a bunch of times, let's just put 5, we'll put a little number, you know, 17 up there, and that will be code for 5 times itself 17 times. So, I mean, go through here and write things like this, this the long way. You don't need to factor the numbers if they're already factorable the numbers, like, or you don't need to factor it out. I mean, just show me that you understand what is being communicated as far as exponents. So just expand the exponent. <coughs> okay, that's cute. So, uh, like the first one that I wanted to like draw people out and kind of trick them is with this one. So let's talk about that one. Uh, again, exponential notation means I want to multiply something by itself a bunch of times. So what is it that I want to multiply by itself here? A, four A? No. Some of you wrote that though. Mm -hmm. right. I can multiply two A by itself. Yeah. 
that's, that's, that's a sweet touch. It's not what I was trying to get you to do, so I don't want you to think I was being too tricky with that one. Let me just, uh, just for the sake of not confusing people, hopefully, uh, I'll just change this to, and you don't have to change it on your notes if you want to, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's make it a, a seven, right? The point here is I'm not trying to take seven times a self. I'm trying to take just a times a self. If I want seven to get multiplied by itself, how will I show that to you? Seven squared parentheses, seven. Seven squared, a squared, right? Or just parentheses around the whole thing. Parentheses squared. around the whole thing, yeah. that's right. Now I want the five to be in on the getting exponentiated, but here I don't. Okay. So this is just seven times a, times a. Of course, there was a four before. Some of you had four a times four a. A really common mistake. And it's especially, even if you didn't make that mistake with the variables, I bet I could trick some more of you by saying plug in a number for a. You know, what'll happen a lot is you got seven, and I tell you to plug in <coughs> negative three. Okay, plug in negative three for a, I'll see negative three squared. And even some of those that wrote it correctly this time may even do this mistake negative 21 squared. That's not what's supposed to happen. I don't want to square the seven. If I did, I would put parentheses around the whole thing. So yeah, I'll multiply those together first. This, this is, it's not even about the order of operations. It's about what am I trying to get across? What am I trying to communicate to you, one person to another? If I'm trying to communicate to take five to the third as well, I'm gonna put that in parentheses, right? Because I think it's more natural to think that A is the only thing that's squared, right? So there you go, there's that. Um, so what does this mean, a, to the, a, to, a over three to the third? Mitch? A over three times A over three times A over three. Real simple. We are going to get more into this in future uh, sections of the book. Uh, there's actually a first section of one of the chapters, chapter six or seven, I can't remember, but it's all about the properties of exponents. Not all the properties of exponents can be pulled out of this slide, okay? We don't need really any other things to tell us how exponents work other than to write them out long way if we're confused at all. Because okay. you know the mistake that gets made here? A lot of people will, trying to shortcut use properties of exponents, will write a to the third over three. And if you don't really think about it, you might think, yeah, it makes sense, a is being raised to the third power. But what does it mean to raise something to the third? It means multiply by itself three times. What are we multiplying by itself three times? a over three. So the denominator should be three to the third power property of exponents we'll talk about. A over three to the third is the same as a to the third over three to the third. When you take a fraction to a power each to the third. But I wish we did not have properties. I wish we didn't have oil. I wish we didn't have all these things that confuse people. Let's just talk about the math. What does it mean to exponentiate something? Multiply it by itself a bunch of times. If I do that, I will arrive at the right thing every time. When I try to remember these properties and apply them correctly, and then I forget them, and I'm not thinking about the math behind here we're going to multiply something by itself three times. What are we going to multiply by itself three times? 5a. 5a times 5a times 5a. There it is. Right? And so the mistake that happens a lot here, which is obviously not correct, is I will get 5a to the third. Right? Just thinking, well, the a and the three, they're right there. And it kind of the reverse mistake of, of the mistake that gets made up here. Shouldn't be, I mean, we could write it as a to the third, right? There's an a to the third in here, isn't there? But what else is there? A five to the third, five times itself three times. Okay? Here we have two a squared times itself three times. Two a squared times two a squared times two a squared. What does a squared mean? Two times a times a. Yeah, this part is two times a times a, so we have two. Times a times a times two times a times a. Two times a times a. Okay. A lot of times, uh, students will ask me, when I do this, do I add the exponents? Do I multiply the exponents? That's all properties of the exponents. And if you don't know which one you're supposed to do, you should go back to basics and write it out yourself. Write it out long way. Okay. What do we get here? We get two, three times. So it should be right here. Short enough with exponents. Two to the third. And how many a's are we multiplying together? Six of them. Turns out, 
that means two times three is six, and that is a property that works. But if you forget, don't rely on your, rem your remembering and fixing your forgetting. Work on fixing your knowledge. Okay? Write it out long way. See what happens. We get three groups of two A's, so we have six factors of A. And here, the number one mistake in exponentiation is two to the fourth plus A to the fourth. You may even think, what's the big deal with that? What are we multiplying by itself four times? To here, we are multiplying 2 plus a. 2 plus a, 2 plus a, four times. If you've ever multiplied two parentheses together that have two, a binomial in both two terms and times two terms, remember FOIL? Is FOILing something look a little more complicated than this? At least just multiplying these two gives you three terms. You multiply it by this one, you're going to have six terms. But this one you have 12 terms. Okay, so it's it's more complicated than that. So be careful. Uh, don't make that mistake. We'll get into that more later. But we do have a few minutes left. We have enough minutes left to um, to watch a video. Okay, and a video about the order of operations. If you went to elementary school in the U.S. or much of the rest of the world, you almost certainly learned about something boringly called the order of operations, a set of rules for whether or not you should do multiplication before addition or addition before subtraction to get the right answer on your math test. Except you don't always get the right answer, or even one answer. I mean, is 8 minus 2 plus 1 equal to 5 or 7? And is 6 divided by 3 divided by 3 equal to 2 thirds or 6? The problem is, focusing on the order of operations can lead to ambiguity and obscures the real, underlying, and often beautiful mathematics. A mathematician will tell you that 8 minus 2 plus 1 is really 8 plus negative 2 plus 1, which is unambiguously equal to 7, even though the so-called order of operations standard in the US tells you the answer is 5. If you want 5 for your answer, then you really need some parentheses. But why is this ambiguity even possible? It's because, fundamentally, all of these operations are simply different procedures that start with two numbers and combine them in some way to give you one number. Each operation takes two numbers as input, two and no more. If you want to be entirely unambiguous and pedantic, every single pair of numbers in any algebraic expression should be inside parentheses. And then there's no need to know any order of operations. Just evaluate the innermost parentheses first and work outwards, collapsing them down pairwise like a championship bracket. But it turns out that's not the only way. It's possible to change the order in which you do the operations, to rearrange the parentheses, as long as you know what the underlying mathematics is. For example, if you want to add 3 plus 4 and then multiply the result by 5, you can either do the addition first and get 7 times 5 equals 35, or you can do the multiplication first, as long as you know that multiplication distributes across all the terms in the parentheses. That is, 5 times 3 plus 5 times 4 equals 15 plus 20 equals 35. The same answer. And how do we know multiplication distributes? One way is to draw rectangles, but I've done that before. The same rearranging can be done for exponentiation and multiplication. 3 times 2 all squared, or 6 squared equals 36, is the same as 3 squared times 2 squared, 36. It even works for addition and subtraction. 5 minus 1 plus 2 is 5 minus 1 minus 2. So the true order of operations is this. Use parentheses and learn what exponentiation, multiplication, addition, and the rest are really doing. Then you can proceed however you want. That's not to say that we don't have a conventional order of operations in mathematics. I mean, deciding that we evaluate multiplication before addition allows us to get rid of lots and lots of redundant parentheses. And noticing that 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 1 plus 2 plus 3, and 2 times 3 times 4 equals 2 times 3 times 4 removes a ton more. But the point is that those parentheses are still there, still implied. Just like how 3 minus 4 is secretly implying 3 plus negative 4, and 3 divided by 4 is really 3 times 1 fourth. But anytime the result might be ambiguous, you really need to use parentheses. Then you can proceed in whatever order you want. The order of operations learned in school, however, is different. It's a mechanical set of instructions that dictates just one of the many ways you can do algebra. It locks you into a single path through the beautiful mathematical landscape. 
which, while necessary for a computer whose goal is merely to give you the right answer, doesn't really give any insight onto what it is that you're doing when you do algebra. So while the order of operations isn't technically wrong, because most of the time it'll give you the standard answer, it's morally wrong, because it turns humans into robots. Okay. Um, what do you think about that? Great. Think about that last statement, it turns people into robots. That kind of summarizes everything that I don't like about mathematics education. Do you feel like you're a bunch of robots? If you are asking questions like, uh, do I multiply or do I uh, add the exponents? If you go to a person and you ask them what's the answer to that, you might be a robot. If you think about it and try and figure it out and realize, like, oh, yeah, I remember. It's a to the sixth, because there's three groups of two a factors. Hold on, don't no, quite give up yet. Uh, the, the message that I want you to get is, is question authority, okay? Think about what you're doing. 